What is going on everybody? My name is Northy and today I am doing a, something a little different uh, as we are waiting for Team Coach to make its way onto Shaw's store shelves. I'm going to be discussing North Melbourne's performance over the first weekend of the season and uh, there's a lot of excitement to talk about. I know I had a lot of people um, potentially come here from my appearance on Footy A2Z, which also I will uh, leave a link to in the description below because I think it's a good video. Your boy makes a bit of an appearance and talks a little bit about his club, so uh, if you would like to go and check that out, please be sure to do so as I would love to talk more about my football club and the AFL in general on this channel. But I'm really, really happy with how North Melbourne have performed for their first week. Obviously, not the most perfect performance, as it was eventually just a five-point win against the West Coast Eagles. However, there is a lot that I'm really excited about and I'm looking forward to for this season. Um, still have to stay realistic. However, small wins like that, you do have to enjoy as you move on to the next week. Um, and that's kind of been the, the mindset and the go-ahead with Alastair Clarkson at the helm. It's literally been enjoy it for the moment and then we move on to the next one. He has set this club up in a big picture mode from everything that I've seen on North Melbourne socials and the small insights from the club. Alastair Clarkson is always happy to enjoy wins, especially with the state that the club's up, club is at at the moment, but we are looking at big picture. There's a small blip um, that Alastair Clarkson has with the North Melbourne club to try and get them back on track for a, for a premiership in however long that takes, but it doesn't start unless the boys believe, unless the team believes they can do it. And I think performances, especially for the second and third quarter, most of the third quarter, the, the performance in that game and those particular quarters really shows that this thing has some talent. Like when they can put it together, they can make teams look silly, um, especially two standouts, the obvious standouts if you've been paying attention to that North Melbourne game. Harry Sheasel and Luke Davies Uniac. God, I can't believe I'm saying it, but LDU, if the, if the boys have a good enough season, there's a chance he's up there in the Brownlow medal, and that could be my bias talking. <laughs> but man, he looks absolutely insane now. He looks like he runs the game at his pace now. My criticism of Luke Davies Uniac originally when he was first coming in was that he would try and do too much. Now, although he still has that flash aspect to him, I think when he's handling the ball, he looks a bit more controlled. He looks a bit more like he knows what he's doing. And it's going to be interesting to see whether that stays as we go along into future games against much tougher opponents because although it was a nice it was nice to beat West Coast, West Coast are in a similar boat as us in that they aren't contending. They aren't looking to win any premierships this year, probably even next year, but they are looking to make improvements. So it's good in that winnable game, in those games that we can win, we managed to take them. I would have loved it if our team could have been a bit more, you know, on the ball the entire game rather than kind of just like coasting for the rest of the game. But I also try to give them a little bit of leniency because we had very few moments last year where we had the time or the moments to get some poise and protect the ball and hold a lead. Uh, there were very few times throughout the year last year um, and it goes to show because against Collingwood is the first one that comes to my head. We had Collingwood on the ropes last year and because we've just not been used to winning for so long, they completely threw the game away. They didn't know what to do in crunch time. And against a team like Collingwood, who last year they were just kings at crunch time, you couldn't stop them, they managed to run over the top of us. And it nearly happened again on the weekend. Uh, West Coast, it really shouldn't be happening. But that play that we had, the, the link-up play was so beautiful. The skills looked a lot better during that first half and that um, majority of the third quarter. The skills looked really, really good. And it looked like we could have run up a big score on them. But... Nonetheless, we slow down. That's the reality of the situation. There's just things that we need to kind of patch up here and there. Skills are a bit sloppy, which obviously will come over time. It is the first round of the year, so maybe that could play a factor, but there's some players here and there that do need to clean their, their act up. Like Kane Turner is the one that comes to my head the most. Um, he still looks like he is very sloppy with ball in hand. Although he did look really good in that first half, he actually started playing some really effective football. So I'll give him credit for that first half, but there's still times where I get very worried with when he has the ball in hand as to what he may do with it. Then, like, the Curtis Taylor miss. I didn't know what to do in that moment. I thought we are definitely losing this game as soon as he missed from point blank range. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just watch the, the final two minutes of the of the North West Coast game and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The composure to take a grab that he did and then to spray it off the post from that distance, 
I won't know how to deal with that situation if it happens again, but in the moment, I thought we were losing. I thought we were definitely going to lose. <sighs> A lot that we need to work on in crunch time. That is our big thing, I feel like. Crunch time just seems to get to our heads too much. And having games like that where we can run it out, um, especially against Richmond. Uh, Richmond practically threw the game away, if I'm being honest, last year. They had plenty of chances to get over the top of us and they couldn't take it. Same kind of goes with this game, but I feel like we at least put more pressure on them. We looked more dominant this time. And again, this is against West Coast, so I can't go ahead and say that we're going to make big steps this year but i really really think out of the top out of the bottom four is where we're headed if things go well and if we keep playing at our best if we if i can see a can com a complete game against the team in the future then it's going to feel really really good that's going to get us up i think we have a game against hawthorne coming up in tasmania that could be a very very interesting contest hawthorne although they got smacked by essendon there is a chance with the way that they played at certain points, they could very much uh, run over the top of us um, if necessary. James Sicily in the back line, uh, John Newcomb in the middle, um, Chad Wingard looked quite good at times on uh, the weekend. So that game is probably one that will we'll really test us and see whether we have the skill to get out of the bottom four. But this week, we're coming up against Fremantle uh, at Optus Stadium, Stadium in WA. So. A very difficult task. I think last year when we played them at Optus, we only scored 24 points <laughs> to give you an idea as to like where the bar is to show improvement here. It'll be Griffin Lowe uh, returning back to Frio against his old side, so that'll be interesting. Not having Tristan Jerry as well means that Todd Goldstein will find his way back into the lineup. Uh, Tristan Zeri, like I've heard a lot of good things about his preseason, and the thing is, I usually do. But like, as soon as he hits the game, or as soon as the game gets to him, it feels like he doesn't really know where he's supposed to be on the field, or exactly how he can put his impact in the game. Um, definitely as a ruckman, I think when he was on the field, uh, before he went off, I think with a broken ankle is the official announcement, but before he went out, Tristan Jerry looked really effective in the ruck. Um, he looked like he was actually doing quite well. I'm surprised how well we managed without him uh, once he went down. Uh, Hugh Greenwood, just an absolutely incredible performance, really, from him. Hugh Greenwood managed to be uh, another big bright spot. Just a lot of people in that game managed to look really good. So, Hugh Greenwood, another one that I'm so glad is on our team at the moment. He has a lot of heart and a lot of fight. The dude tackles all day, and it's great to see. But this is going to be our first big test to see how we match up. Fremantle coming off of a loss against St. Kilda at Marvel. Uh, that will be their big, big like, okay... We may not be where we think we are just yet, and we still need to work it out. There's still areas where I think North could run over the top of them. I'm always going to be hopeful, especially considering, like, the passages of play that I saw on the weekend against West Coast showed that we, at our best, definitely can be competitive. It's just we can't manage it out to a full game right now. So I still think Fremantle beats us convincingly, but I'd like to see some stretches of play where we may start to run over the top, may start to build a bit of momentum, not just stay even, like... Let them get a 40-point lead and then just stick at that 40-point lead for the entire game because, like, it doesn't really show anything. It just shows that we managed to keep it at a certain level of embarrassment for us for an entire game, which at times it felt like we were doing last year. I think we need to try and find a way to make this game competitive. It is going to be a very tough one, but I think if there's any positive from last week, uh, it's that this team now knows they can compete with some with some pretty good teams. They made West Coast look very, very amateur at times. And if they can play at that level, they can stay competitive with the middle of the ladder teams, which it looks like Fremantle may be this year with the way they played in their game against St. Kilda. I don't know how like optimistic I am being with this team and whether I'm already a bit too over the top now, but considering we took a game that was very winnable for us and we took it and we managed to run away with it, it could have been a completely different story and a completely different outlook if we'd managed to choke that game. Like, really, it could have been a completely different look this entire video. So, it kind of has me second-guessing how optimistic I can be about this team. But at the same time, if you saw what I saw, you'd be very excited. Uh, Sheasel, once again, he looks really, really good. He looks super exciting off the half-back. A lot of people now comparing him to Nick Dacos, which scares me because, like, it's hard to expect a rookie to play at that level all year. Nick Dacos is just a freak of nature. The kid's absolutely incredible. You can, there's no denying it. But if Harry Sheasel can manage to play at that level for the entire season, that's really exciting for this club. We haven't even unleashed pick number two, George Wardlaw. Like, 
This is all very exciting. Um, I can't remember if George Wilder was two or four. He was either side of it, but I know it was Cadman. Yeah, he would have been four. So Cadman, uh, Ashcroft, Sheasel, and Wardlaw. And from what I've heard, North are really excited about unleashing Wardlaw onto the competition. So it gives me a lot of excitement as to where this season could go with our rookies. This, this team is giving me a lot of hope at the moment, and I'm just hoping we can manage to bring that hope over to this next game, because I think games like the one against Freo and the one against Carlton are probably going to be losses, especially Carlton. Carlton, I watched them live on the Thursday night. They just look really solid down front, and without Ben Mackay, again, conveniently when Harry's playing, Ben is not, but I think because our backline is so raw and so like unleaded right now, there's no real leaders other than maybe Jack Siebel, but I wouldn't call him the strongest leader at the moment. I think that Carlton will probably run over the top of us on the scoreboard, even if we do manage to keep up with him in the midfield, which is going to be a very difficult task in itself. We just have to make sure that we hit our targets and make the most of our opportunities in that game if we are to be close. But all I'm saying is this season is off to a very exciting start for North Melbourne. Um, I'm not going to say that we're going to make finals or even do anything this, this season. I would not be surprised if we're still bottom four, but there's hope there and that's all that matters. If we can manage to finish what, 18, 17, 16, if we finish 14th, that's a win in my books. It shows that there's signs of life in this club, but... Obviously, it's one round. You can only talk so much about the season off one round, but I'm really excited. It gives me a lot of hope for this team, and I'm hoping that uh, they don't let me down because there's a few games that I think we can definitely win during this, this next month uh, month period. It's just about whether we take it by the balls. So let's see how we go. North Melbourne, 1-0 to start. Beaten West Coast, not the greatest side, but we will take it every day of the week. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. Um, do you guys like my discussion? Do you guys want to see more like this? And if you guys do want to see more like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel as well if you are new. Everything is always very, very much appreciated and I love talking about my team. So if you guys enjoyed it, then be sure to show me that support. Thank you all so, so much for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.